Welcome to this episode of Our College of Voices. I'm your host, Kara Monroe. Through partnership with two state agencies, the Indiana Department of Education and the Indiana Commission for Higher Education, Ivy Tech Community College is embarking upon not one, but two initiatives this summer that are designed to help high school students and recent graduates achieve post-secondary success. The first initiative is Crossing the Finish Line, which focuses on assisting high school students and recent graduates complete remaining coursework needed to secure a short-term certificate or degree this summer. The second initiative is Bridging the Gap, which focuses on assisting high school students identified as not meeting certain college readiness benchmarks to bridge from high school to college. I have an incredible group of guests here to talk with me today, so let's meet them. First up is Jason Callahan. Hi, Jason. Hey, how's it going, Kara? Going well. Would you tell us a little bit about you and who you work for and what you do? My name is Jason Callahan, and I am the Assistant Secretary of Student Pathways and Opportunities for the Indiana Department of Education. In that capacity, I work on student pathways as well as special education, school safety, social emotional behavioral wellness, improvement, accountability, and our title grants and supports. You have a very busy plate. (laughs) Yes, very, (laughs) like we said before, a lot of good work going on in the department, and uh, I feel um, very engaged in a lot of it. It's great to have you here with us today, Jason. Next up is Charlie Beezer. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Kara. Thanks for having us on today. My pleasure. Please introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Charlie Beezer. I'm the Associate Commissioner for Communications and Outreach for the Indiana Commission for Higher Education. Um, In my role, which is sort of a a recent role, I was previously communications director for not quite two years, but I oversee the commission's communications, marketing, public relations, and our outreach divisions. So that's including student, parent, school outreach. We have an amazing team of dedicated outreach and communications professionals, um, and many of them have helped build a lot of what we're going to talk about today. Happy to represent the team. Excellent. I've loved working with you in your previous role, and I can't wait to work with you in your new role. So congratulations again on your promotion. You're welcome. And next up is Rebecca Rachelty. Hi, Rebecca. Good afternoon, Kara. I'm delighted to be here. Welcome back. Would you remind folks what you do here at the college? Absolutely. So I'm honored to serve as the vice president of K-14 initiatives and statewide partnerships at Ivy Tech. And uh, in that role, I have the opportunity to work closely with high schools and career centers across the state, uh, work with our K-14 teams and campuses um, to be able to provide high quality programming and supports to our K-12 partners. Wonderful. Welcome back to the show. Next up is Joe Carlin. Joe, I think this is your first time on the show. Is that right? It is my first time. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I know a lot of the folks who listen already do know you, but would you remind folks what your role is and a little bit about you? Absolutely. So uh, my role is the Vice President of Recruitment and Enrollment Management at Ivy Tech in our systems office. So this is a new role. So I'm kind of learning as we go. I'm officially nine months in. Um, I thought it was six months until the other day and I looked at the calendar and realized, no, it's actually nine months. But I am just having so much fun because, you know, we're kind of learning how to really reimagine what recruitment and enrollment looks like at Ivy Tech. And the best part is I've had the opportunity to really work together with a a lot of our colleagues across the state from the campus level to systems office, but focusing in K-14, focusing on workforce development and and really uh, understanding how we help the boots on the ground uh, make a difference for the community that we serve. So I'm just really excited to be here. Thank you. Awesome. We're glad to have you. And last but not least is Corey Klossman. Hi, Corey. Hello, Kara. Would you, uh, you've been on the show many times, but would you remind folks of what you do here? Sure. I'm the vice president for student success in systems office. And so I have the fun job of helping find ways to help students be successful in their coursework and hopefully walk across the graduation stage. Excellent. Welcome back, Corey. All right, everybody, we've got a lot to talk about today. So let's dive right in. Let's start with the Crossing the Finish Line initiative. Tell um, folks a little bit about this program. Who is it targeting? How many students do we hope to serve? And just a little bit more about the program in general. So we are um, really excited to have the opportunity to serve additional students this year. Those who are, um, I think, near completers is the term we've sort of been talking about and making sure that students who are pretty close, but not quite there, who have graduated or are getting ready to, are able to either complete the Indiana College Core, which um, formerly called the STGEC. Some of you probably have heard that before, which is 30 credit hours of general education credit transfers to and among uh, colleges in Indiana. 
or a, a TC or a CG, those are certificates from IB Tech and Vincent's or even possibly an associate degree. I think there are even a couple in the pipeline that may be ready for that. So it's, it's um, the state is, is providing the funding to be able for Ivy Tech students who have taken dual credit either at Ivy Tech or other institutions to have the opportunity to, to just finish up, get across that sort of last mile and make it to the, the college with, uh, or whatever they're going to next with some sort of credential or something in hand. I would just echo that as the department looked at the, the impact of the pandemic on student learning and we, we began working on accelerated learning, it was an obvious partnership to work with the commission and our higher ed partners to, as Charlie said, identify students who were very close to fulfilling those credential completions and just needed a, a few classes to, to be able to complete. And we know the importance of credential completion and, and try to stay away from random acts of dual credit so that those credentials can, can uh, have transferability to further post-secondary pursuits or into the, the workforce. Uh, I will just add, uh, so you had asked about the number of students that we hope to serve. So I have an updated number to share it. Uh, as of today, uh, we have 1,690 students awesome. enrolled in the Crossing the Finish Line program. That is fantastic. And we're recording on June 10th, um, and this will release, uh, I think, one week from today, so June 17th. So that's pretty close to a final number, probably, right, Rebecca? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Right there. Yeah. Okay. That's fantastic. Good. And Charlie mentioned the Indiana College Corps. If you do want to listen, uh, learn more about the College Corps, um, we talked about that extensively in episode 132. So I'll link to that in the show notes. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about the focus on post-secondary completion. So uh, I think Jason mentioned, you know, we're trying to ro- avoid random acts of dual credit, and we are trying to avoid those at all costs. The focus on post-secondary completions for high school students and recent grads can you explain why it's important for students and families, for, for those who don't deal with this every day and talk about it every day, why is this important? From the Department of Ed, one of our top priorities is student outcomes. And we recognize that with, with the shifting economy and, and advances in technology, that um, the, the way we, our, our former credentials, our former diploma requirements no longer carry the same currency as as they once did. And so we have to increase that currency and ensure that every Hoosier child is leaving our K-12 institutions, again, ready to to pursue more at the post-secondary level or to have a life-fulfilling career. And so we are really pushing credential completion. Indiana College Corps and technical certificates are are great ways to be able to accomplish this in our schools. And so we see this as an opportunity to to raise the currency of graduation requirements for our Hoosier children. One of the things that I've heard Secretary Jenner at DOE and Commissioner Lovers at CHE talk about a lot is, um, and importantly so, this idea of really blurring the lines, blurring the transitions between K-12 and higher ed. And I think we continue to see the importance of that going forward. And the the amazing thing about this partnership that we've all created this year is it's you can actually see it in action, this, this blurring of that and the students really leaving school ready for the next step, whatever that is for them. And I think you'll I get to I get to refer to a lot of episodes today, which is great. You can actually hear directly from uh, Dr. Jenner and from Teresa Lovers in our Thought Leader series. Um, Dr. Jenner just aired last week, uh, so that's episode one fifty three, and the episode with Teresa will air this coming Tuesday, so episode one fifty five. Rebecca, I think you were going to add something to that before I started editorializing on other episodes. You can oh to. yeah, no, you're fine. I uh, I just wanted to add that um, you know one of the one of the reports that comes out of the commission uh, every other year is a report that is near and dear to my heart, which is the early college credit report. And so it was just released in January of 2021. And uh, we're, we, you know, we always get excited to see how the impact of the work that we're doing in the K-12 space, those dual credits that students are earning, you know, result in not just short-term outcomes, but long-term outcomes for these students. You know, they're more likely to matriculate to 
a college or university. They're more likely to be retained when they get there. They're more likely to complete on time. Um, and, and, you know, that savings of time and money that they, they you know, that can be gained by students and their families uh, as a result of dual credit programming is just something uh, that is that I feel is very remarkable. Um, it also helps with equity and access, you know, ensuring that the students have access to high quality programming um, before they even graduate high school. And then another piece I think is just anecdotally what we get to hear from students uh, when they come back to us and they say, oh my goodness, these credits really did transfer. You were right. These credits allowed me to come in as a sophomore. These credits allowed me to double major to triple major. They allowed me to have a rich a study abroad experience while I was in college or allowed me to have a rich internship experience that I otherwise wouldn't have had room in my schedule uh, to have. So, you know, I just wanted to share some of those, those outcomes and those anecdotal success stories that we get to hear from students every day. I love that. That's awesome, Rebecca. And I will link to the college completion report in the show notes as well. So let's switch gears um, because we are still recruiting for the Summer Bridge program. So let's talk about that a little bit. The Summer Bridge Program, or we're calling it Bridging the Gap, is getting a lot of attention. What does this program entail and who is eligible? So really what we're doing is we're targeting students that um, haven't uh, met the predetermined college readiness requirements benchmarks. So that's that's the idea is that we're really trying to assist them um, and bridge the gap from high school to higher education. And as the parent of a current high school student that has been homeschooled for the past year and a half due to virtual issues with COVID, I can't be more excited about this program because these are the, you know, this past year and a half, we're seeing these students have gone through things that we've never had to go through before in high school. You know, they didn't know if they were going to have their prom, let alone, you know, think through what they were going to do for college, you know, four months from now, five months from now. And I can tell you, in a teenager's eyes, that's like 12 years, right? In, in teenage time. <laughs> so um, this opportunity to really kind of sit down and say, okay, let's reset. Let's uh, take a look at where you are currently. What can we do to help you get better, better prepared for whatever your next step be, whether it be to higher ed or, or, or beyond. But um, I'm really excited about the fact that we're engaging with those students that, that probably need a little bit more help. Um, and that's exactly what our mission is here at Ivy Tech, is we need to serve those populations. So I'm just really thrilled to have the opportunity to work alongside the state to, to provide this opportunity that I think is so desperately needed right now. I would add on to that to say that, you know, from a K-12 perspective, we want all of our students to aspire to grow academically and, and reach greater. And in, in doing so, sometimes academically, they may come up short. And especially during this, this past year where uh, a lot of students might have been quarantining or, or in and out of the classroom. And so this is a great opportunity for us to be able to, again, as it says, to bridge the gap to ensure that these students are academically prepared for that next stage of their lives. Yeah, I think also a really important point that I want to make about all of the work that we're talking about is, you know, I know you've probably talked about it before on here, Kara, and I'm sure since you talked to Commissioner Lubbers, you absolutely talked about the state's big goal of getting at least 60% of Hoosiers with some form of high quality education and training beyond high school. We know we have work to do. We're at just a little over 48% right now. All of the work that we're doing with, with these programs, all the students that are being impacted, I think it's really important for us to keep the goal in mind and that all of those data points are people and they're all able to, you know, if they're going to come into college even more prepared this fall, then that's just setting them on a a path for success. Um, One of the other reports that we just put out is our uh, college readiness report. And unfortunately, it shows that our college going rate continues to decline in Indiana. And we're at just um, 59% right now. So the, the more we talk about these things and the more that we are putting these opportunities in place for students, you know, we hope to see that these, these are having an impact on our long-term numbers too. I know as a part of the Summer Bridge program, there are a lot of things that make this program really attractive. Um, and just one of those many things is that students get some financial incentives. Can you describe those financial incentives? How do students earn them? What do they earn them for? All of those sorts of things. 
much. We are offering up to $300 for students this summer who are participating in the Summer Bridge program who successfully complete Ivy Tech's Knowledge Assessment Program, the Ivy T111 course, and enroll in college this fall. So I don't want to step on my Ivy Tech colleagues <laughs> and going too much about uh, in depth about their programs and I'll let them do that. But I will say that one of the reasons we've been able to put this together so quickly, knowing that we had some, some funding available is because of the really solid infrastructure that existed already at Ivy Tech. So I think we've been really fortunate to have these, these pieces. And I think the idea of and helping to incent students to to take and complete these things is just one more one more step to make sure that the students who need to take advantage of it are really able to do that. So with that, I'll turn it over to Rebecca or, or Joe. I'll just add a, a few more details. So um, the knowledge assessment that you referenced, you know, it, it is part of uh, the work that we do uh, with students every day. So it's part of our multiple measures, holistic approach to determining a college a college student's readiness in English and mathematics. And so uh, we're really fortunate to be able to work with these students directly to provide them with both the diagnostic assessment as well as the self-paced modules that go along with with ensuring their readiness. It, It really creates a customized learning path for these students. So this program is really very innovative. It's very thoughtfully designed too. How did this idea come about? Yeah, so we were really fortunate. We've been fortunate this year. Um, the Joyce Foundation and e- Education Strategy Group have been um, taking an interest in things that we're doing in Indiana already and um, were able to sort of evaluate what we did last year. If commission, at least, we um, were able to support 11 organizations with about $135,000 in grants for specifically for COVID learning loss. And those were summer bridge type events that had a student peer mentor um, piece involved. And I believe we stole that idea from like Kentucky or something. So it's all, we're all sharing and iterating on what we're, what we're doing. So speaking of stealing things from other states, we were really fortunate to be able to learn from what the Texas Education Authority did last summer. So right in the middle of the, you know, kind of heat of COVID uh, beginning was they they stood this really similar um, Texas Summer Bridge program up there. And we were able, as we were building our program here in Indiana, to be able to learn directly from one of the architects behind the Texas College Bridge and hear about some strategies for success, some of the lessons they learned along the way. And, and we were, again, able to, to, to be able to do this rather quickly because of Ivy Tech's existing programming and the, the help we received from um, help and guidance from Education Strategy Group and, and just the amazing collaboration that you see in front of you today <laughs> with all these agencies and organizations. I think the collaboration piece is amazing. If we didn't have a state where these agencies come together and are willing to work together, this could have never happened, especially as quickly as it did. It's amazing. Absolutely incredible. Anytime we bring in a group of students like this, we always worry about how they're going to be successful. So Corey, could you um, talk specifically, or at least start us off with how is the college going to engage with these students over the summer to try to help ensure their success? Yeah. So we're taking a three-tier approach to how we're communicating with them so that they not only learn about Ivy Tech and college and how um, they can be successful, but also then how we're here to support them and what resources are available as well. So we have weekly communication that will go out to all the students statewide, just about what Ivy Tech offers, what state programs are available, like next level jobs and how they can go to college for free. Um, And so those will be spaced out weekly throughout the semester. But then we also want to be really intentional about connecting the students to the campus. And so then also having weekly communication around who are some of the key people on the campus, who are the chancellor, who's the vice chancellors, for example, but then also making sure we're connecting them to offices like advising and why is advising important and how can that really help kind of demystify some of that college experience and really set you on that path and know exactly from day one what it is that you need to do to be successful, what classes you need to take to be to graduate. And so really making that clear to the students, but then also setting up an opportunity for our faculty and staff to serve as mentors with students as well. And so there's a weekly mentoring guide that goes along with it that is really meant to be a companion to what students are covering in IBYT that week as well. So it all fits together, knowing that those conversations with students are very fluid and dynamic. Um, and we know that based upon what's, what's happening in a student's life will also help guide that conversation, but really making sure that it maximizes that, that experience for the students while really connecting them to college in general as well, because they're not alone and we try to do whatever we can to support them 
here at Ivy Tech. And we hope they feel that way as well. Well, wherever, if you know a high school student, wherever they're going, we want them to be successful. And Ivy Tech is always going to be here to serve them throughout their life as they are learning and need new skills and skill refreshment. So we're always here. As we wrap up today, we'd like to ask our external partners to help create awareness, encourage participation, reach out to your local Ivy Tech campus if you know a student who might be eligible and to get next steps. As for our Ivy Tech colleagues, celebrate with these students, assist them in clearing obstacles, and coach these students to reach their goals. You can reach out to any one of the Ivy Tech folks on this podcast. Um, We will be happy to help remove barriers for any of these students that, that you encounter. Thanks again for listening to this episode of Our College of Voices. I want to thank my guests today, Jason Callahan, Assistant Secretary of Student Pathways and Opportunities, Indiana Department of Education, Charlie Bazer, Associate Commissioner for Communications and Outreach, Indiana Commission for Higher Education, Rebecca Ray Schulte, Vice President of K-14 Initiatives and Statewide Partnership Systems Office, Joe Carlin, Vice President of Recruitment and Enrollment at Systems Office, and Corey Klossman, Vice President of Student Success at Systems Office. I'm your host, Kara Monroe. You can connect with me on Twitter at KNM Tweets. Our producer is Sarah Ferguson. You can reach us by email at ourcollegeyourvoices at ivytech.edu. Don't forget, if you are an Ivy Tech faculty or staff member, you can join our Microsoft Teams listener community. I send out instructions on how to join that community every Thursday. Our website, where you'll find links to show notes and more, is ivytech.edu forward slash podcast. Production assistance for this and every episode provided by Becky Campbell and the Ivy Tech Community College Creative Services team. Our podcast concept is by Matthew Pittman. Theme music and post-production services provided by the amazingly talented Jen Eads at the Brassie Broadcasting Company. And we will talk to you next time on Our College, Your Voices. 